Hello and welcome to Jason Newland dot com. My name is Sir Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Welcome to Lad, 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 me, 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 boy, you, boy, you, boy, you, to sleep, to sleep, to sleep. I've no idea what I'm doing. I apologize. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <gasps> So yeah, hello. Um, I am on YouTube. YouTube. I am. And I've hit my... I actually had someone... Say that there was adverts on there. There should not be any adverts at all. Of course, there are. If someone says there are, then there are. But... And I've had this in the past, so I don't know why. The only the only reason generally I've got a bit of experience with YouTube. Uh generally in my knowledge, there's only two reasons that I would have adverts. Firstly, if I put adverts on there. You know, there's that obvious one. The second reason is if I have a copyrighted video so sometimes they'll they'll allow it but they will put their own adverts on there now as far as i'm aware i don't have one not even one video that has any kind of copyright issue if there is they've not flagged it up on my youtube channel out of nearly 2000 videos I've made sure there's no videos with music in the background. Now, one might have slipped through. If that's the case, then I'll delete it. Because I did make loads with music in the background. And then YouTube copyrighted them. (laughs) Even though free to use. No copyright restrictions on the music. Copyright free, you may say. But no, YouTube... In their wisdom, said new, 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 new. So that's the only thing I can think of. Why? So, yeah. But I go into the system, you know, the YouTube behind the scenes thingy, portal. And I don't have any copyright strikes. I did. Which is why I deleted those videos. And this is like six months ago. I ended up having to delete. <laughs> I feel I deleted about. I deleted hundreds of videos. So. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on there really. The other thing is. I'm still working on the website. It's come together nicely. I'm getting near the end of having made all of the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcasts available on the website to download. So I offer the ability for most of my stuff where if you go to the website, you click on it and it lets you download all four versions in one go. Like without music, with music, five hours and ten hours. I'm up to about hmm, I've probably got about 40 40 40 left to do on the Let Me Boy to Sleep the only problem is I haven't downloaded any of them so I'm having to download them from the podcast and then Stick them into a zip file, so compressed, well, 
put them into a zip file and then upload so it's I can't do a huge amount each day because it's fairly time consuming but it will be done and then another thing I'm doing which I've done on most of the podcasts on the website is I also have videos so on the same page is where you click where you can download all of the stuff together there's also a video which you can watch on YouTube but it's embedded and there's also a play audio player so you can listen to it without music as well so eventually all the recordings will have those and then when it's all complete I'll just change it every day just add the new one and it'll be quite easy to maintain So yeah, the yeah that's it really for the for the website. Um, also, I have a Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group. It's a private group, but you can join. There's currently a hundred ninety one members. And it's taken 63 years to get there. So I'm quite pleased. And that makes me 60. I'm not 63. I'm 39. Blimey. Even 39 sounds old. And I'm 54. It's weird, isn't it? It's not fair. It's never been fair. If I'm too young or I'm too old. Never just right. Never the correct age. You know, when I was seven, like, oh, or 14, 15, I want to drink in the pubs. I can't drink in the pubs. Because, you know, even when I was 18, I struggled to get a drink in the pubs. Because I looked about 10. <sighs> and I actually thought, well, someone said to me, it's not such a bad thing looking really young for your age. Because when you get older, you'll just look younger. Hasn't seemed to work out that way. Although, you know, some people do say they think I'm in my 40s, not 50s. Like 49 and 3 quarters, maybe. But but then you don't, you never know. It's, it's hard to know if someone's just lying. <laughs> flattery, it's just being flatterish. I don't mind actually, it feels quite nice. Ooh. And I had someone local who said, oh, have you lost weight? I said, yeah, have you noticed? And she said, yeah, you don't look as fat as you used to. Oh, great. Thanks, but mm, could have worded it nicer. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much what's been happening took Vinny for a walk it's been raining I've noticed the weather is uh, I'm a little bit affected by the weather now I don't have SAD because I'm not adding any more conditions to my already <laughs> to my whatever I've got I'm not adding anything else but I do find the the weather the like the downcast raining all day yeah it's uh, it does have a bit of an effect on me i've noticed that the last few years actually I never used to i don't think maybe it did eh, i don't know i think it's just the whole kind of not being able to well i can go out but i get wet and i don't really like getting wet Hence, why I smell so bad. Because of showers. Ooh, water. Ooh. That's my ideal woman, really. Someone, someone that doesn't wash. No, no. My ideal woman would be someone that has bad vision, so that they can't ever really see my face properly. So my face is always a blur. So I've got more chance of getting a girlfriend that way. 
She says, face, my face is always a bit of a blur. You can see me. You know, I don't look like a ghost. But it, it's... With this red face, I'm never, you never see a red red ghost, do you? But just... And someone that has no sense of smell. Because I'm so smelly. So that that'd be a perfect... And... Might sound weird, but five legs. Oh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just in a weird mood. I am in a weird mood today. Oh, yes. Uh, I had a neighbour pull up next to me in a car, open the door and say, do you know Do you know where I can get one of these? And she was holding a plug with a, like a, you know, just a plug that you use for an iPhone or iPad or something. Do you know where I can get one of them? I said, yeah, you're holding one. I walked off and I don't think she was too impressed. It's like, yeah, I know where you can get stuff. Go online. I mean, the amount of people that knock on my door over the years, like, have you got a lighter? Have you got, uh, have you got any stamps? Uh, have you got any, when I used to drink Coke, have you got any, can I get a can of Coke? Like, you do realise where I get my stuff from is where you can get your stuff from. It's called shops. You, you can go and get them there. You don't have to go via me. You can go straight to the source. Of course, you know, you will need that stuff that you don't like to spend. You know? Well, you don't mind spending it on some some certain things, do you? But not, not, not things like... Uh, Rizzlers or, uh, you know, things that you shouldn't don't need to spend them on. I mean, I've got a friend, a proper weed smoker. Keeps running out of lighters. Keeps running out of Rizzlers. Like, that is what you... It's like being a sailor and, like, forgetting to take your your paddles with you. <laughs> your paddles? Your, you know, like a canoe, forgetting to take your... Are they called paddles? Your rowers? Oars? couple of old oars you might have with the old the old canoe I don't know but you don't forget that and then people like I'm in a, in a weird mood you know people act like really they're not even aware of anything but they're rare enough to get dressed they're aware enough to put their shoes on they're aware enough to close their door and lock their door when they left the house they're aware enough to make sure they got the wallet with them they're aware enough to get on the bus so you know, they, they don't know what I'm doing yeah you do know what you're doing you're just maybe they don't know what they're doing I don't know I'm just talking rubbish forget forget me well, you know, how often do you see someone that's for me if you do you see anyone walking down the street with no shoes on? Then that's a problem. I have dreams like that. I have dreams where I've got no shoes. And I'm like leaving like, I've got no shoes on. How? I don't know. Where are they? I don't know. If I knew where they were, uh, I'd be wearing them, I think. Yeah, I would. Or I'd go back and get them if I knew where they were. I lost my keys. Where did you leave them last? <sighs> Inside your mum's bra. Uh, let's go and find them. You know, it's like, no. It's just... It's just a weird thing, isn't it? Where did you leave them last? Eh. Have you looked for them? Have you traced your tracks? No, no, no. Um, I just decided just to leave them. I'm just going to sell the car. I don't need a car anymore. I'm going to sell it, get a bus pass. Yeah. Wait for hours for a bus that never turns up. That's what I'm going to do. I can't even bother to look for the keys. No. Of course I could. Did you look? Yeah, I did. Uh, so, yeah. It's been a good day. <laughs> it's been a strange... Did I tell you that Vinnie bit me? yesterday 
I probably mentioned it. Why not? Oh, he's crouching down. He knows the word bit, bite. I still got a mark on my finger. It wasn't a big bite, but it was a definitely like that. That's what I started doing is growling at him. So if he if he's being naughty and he's like biting at my my ankles and stuff, I growl at him because that's what dogs do to each other, isn't it? They growl. And he looks, <laughs> he just looked at me like. We got home. I thought it was fine. I hear him on the phone to the crisis team. Yeah, my dad is. I think it's so wrong with him. <laughs> no, no, he's wearing shoes this time. But he's he started growling. So okay. Uh, so yeah. Oh what I have. So it's Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, the twenty fifth of September. It's nine minutes past nine PM PM and I just I mean, I watched this really quite a funny thing. Well, I guess it wasn't funny for everyone. It was it was at a conference, like a, a boxing, pre pre preparing for a big boxing event on the 12th of October, which will be, um, well, lots of boxes on there. And it was really weird because it was so nice. They were holding it... I don't even know where they were holding it, to be fair. Probably in London. Unless it was in Dubai, because that's, that's where the event's going to be. Maybe they maybe they was in Dubai. Huh. Anyway, they... Uh, Frank Warren went into this big tirade. Let me just have a drink. Yeah, the Sir Frank Warren started moaning, moaning about other people that were moaning about these, apparently, the oh, Saturday's big fight, Joshua against uh, Dubois. They played the Dubai or United Arab Arab Emirates. I'm not sure what the correct term is. Alright then. They played the, their national anthem. Before the fight. And apparently people have been moaning about it. Like. Nah, 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 nah. Like. Well. If it wasn't for the. United Arab Emirates. That might be the right place. But anyway. Dubai. And the, the royal family and all that stuff. That event wouldn't have took place. It, you know, they financed the whole thing. They, they're the ones that got all the different promoters together. No one's ever done that, probably in the history of boxing. Got so many different promoters working together for one big boxing event. And they're doing it again in October. But he went on a proper moan, moanathon. And then... They were going for, and Eddie Hearn then did a kind of a similar thing. Then someone else, another promoter, did a similar thing, but a less, less of, you know, less compared to Frank. I mean, he was getting proper worked up. And he, so that was it. And then they went around the fighters and stuff. 
Chris, okay, they got to Chris Eubank. And he started slagging off the promoters, starting off with Frank Warren. I like really badly I mean not not like just generally or uh, tongue in cheek or kind of being vague he was very very direct about what he was saying calling them all crooks and thieves and whatever else and the weird thing about it is they were sitting right next well not next to each other but Chris Eubank Jr. was sitting just in front of Frank Warren. You know, just literally just in front of him. There was not a, there was there was enough of a gap for a human to walk between them. That's that's how close they were. And he went into a tirade, really. So Frank Warren started arguing with him. And it was just and, he, and Chris Eubank went back against Eddie Hearn, against, uh, I think, Bob Arum, against you know, all kinds of people, apart from um, Ben Shalom, who he said he liked, and the uh, uh, Turkey, the Sheik, Turkey, Turkey Alex Sheik, the Sheik, who's pretty much in charge of the whole thing he said he liked he liked Dubai because Dubai were honest unlike all the promoters and it was he really went into them and then if that wasn't awkward enough at the end of the whole kind of you know the talking and stuff they the boxers did a face off each and for each face off there was Eddie Hearn and then there was um what Frank Warren Ben Shalom was on the side and they were so, so they were standing just behind and the boxes stood in front of them. So when Chris Eubank Jr. came out, he was literally centimetres away from Frank Warren. Very strange. Very, honestly, I've, I've never seen anything like it in my life. In my entire life. Very, I've seen boxers go at each other and verbal sparring and having arguments and stuff. But I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen a... No, it's not totally true. Um, Canelo. Canelo started shouting at... At what's his name? It, his former promoter from Golden Boys, Oscar De La Hoya. So he used to be Canelo's promoter or manager years ago. And then, on this is a couple of fights back, Canelo was having a proper go at him, shouting at him. In fact, squaring up to him. It was like whoa. What on earth's going on here? Honestly, I, at one point I forgot I had a nice hot cup of tea to drink with sugar in it. That's how long ago it was. I had sugar in my tea. That's going to be a, a new marker in my memory system now. Remembering times by what was that pre or post sugar or during sugar? You know, what was. So, yeah. I can't drink tea now unless I'm eating. Tea on its own is pointless because it tastes horrible. But with food, it's all right. You know, the food kind of makes it taste okay. But on a just like an empty palate, as it were, like a, a cleansed palate, it just tastes... Bleh. But if I'm eating, like eat, eat my breakfast cereal because... First thing in the morning, that's my favourite thing. Once I've edited the podcast, I have my ready brick and a cup of tea. And the tea's lovely, the ready brick's lovely, but it's a nice mix. The two mixes quite well. But yesterday, I had a friend come round, and 
she, <laughs> she said, have you got any sugar? I said, no. So she said, I'll bring some round. I said, why? She said, so I can have a cup of tea. I said, I don't even want to see sugar. And she brought a little bag of sugar round. And then I said, well, I'll, I'll have to just wash this cup up because so I can make your tea. Now, I'm not sure she didn't, well, I've only got one cup. That's That's the point. I don't know if she... I'm not sure she didn't like the idea of drinking out the same cup as me. But she went home and got brought a cup back of hers. And then she left it here. She left the sugar here. And she said, oh, yeah. Because I said to her, you've forgotten your cup on the phone. She said, oh, sorry, I'll leave it there for next time so I can have a cup of tea. She left the sugar as well. So I've got that tempting me, calling me. JJ, mm -mm, my tastes so good. Mmm. Do you remember when tea tasted nice? Do you remember when there was actually a a point to drinking tea? Do you remember when you could have sugar, or oh, on your oh cornflakes and Weetabix with sugar? Do you remember how yummy they taste? Now how bland and pointless they are. Oh, do you remember? Oh, honestly, the sugar is quite rude. Quite rude. You don't realise it until. No, Vinny, you haven't got a fan at the crisis team. Stop. I'm just messing around. So yeah, I. I said to her, like, you're leaving stuff around here. I don't really, you know, just make sure you don't leave too much stuff around here. Don't want to come in one day and just realise that you've moved half your stuff in. Considering I'm not in a relationship, she's just, she's Vinny's mum, she's a friend. But I said, if you're going to leave anything, at least leave some underwear, which was wrong to say, and I just shouldn't have said it out loud then. But made a laugh. So, he, Vinny likes, he likes underwear as well, he likes, he does. When he first moved in here, he ripped apart nearly every pair of underpants I had. Now he doesn't go near them, which is weird. And it's strange, like, you know, when he first got, he ripped, he ripped to pieces my shoes, underpants, Anything that was on the floor that you could get hold of, he'd, he'd rip it to bits. But I'm thinking, because he had a, a kind of a gaggle, some kind of weird tooth thing that event, eventually came out. So that might have been what he was doing, trying to kind of, maybe he had a tooth, it was irritating him, and he had to get it out. It was like a baby tooth that was still in there. And I remember once... I think I found it on the floor. Like, what's that? And it was a tooth. It looked like a tooth. So maybe that's what he was doing. He was just trying to pull it out in his own way. Hey, is that what you're doing? So what? What? What is? How? How does that explain all the biting you're doing now? Why do you keep? Stop putting your sausage roll. I don't want it in my face. Just, just. Why well, can't I just look at your face? You've got a lovely face, Vinny. Very pretty. Hey. Eh? Still can't get over how cute he was when he was a baby. That little video of him and his little his little fat legs. Because he's got quite long legs. I know he's got little legs, but they're really slim. But they were like all creased and thick. And the the pictures, it was just... Okay, when he was first born, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it was, I don't know, I mean, I don't know what he was. It didn't look like a, a dog. But it's amazing, within a couple, a week, two weeks, it grew so quickly. It was so cute. 
But he only had a little nose as well. He's like, it, it kind of grew out. Because it was, he had, yeah. It's, I don't know, just... Oh, he's got a friend. Well, they're not friends' friends. There's someone in the in that goes for a walk in the park that's got exactly the same tail as him, exactly the same colouring, same face, pretty much. But it's just a bigger dog. It's not. It's not a Jack Russell, but it's probably got similar genes to him. Some of the because Jack Russells were mixtures of dogs put together by a some weird uh, I don't know what it was bishop some kind of bishop or something years ago and so he's got that kind of similar they've got a similar look and they both have a kind of similar temper, temperament because this dog was in a pram because it had a, a leg injury £3,000 it cost to have that that operation on that leg. Three thousand pound. Wow. Anyway, it's not allowed to walk for a while. Because if it gets out, it'll run around. Or he will run around. And Vinny went up to say hello and the dog growled at him. So what he did is he went up to the the dog's grandmother. And was like saying hello, and the dog didn't like that either. I'm like, get away from my gran, get away from my nanny. And then <laughs> he lay down on his back, and she had when when he does that at people's feet, they got no choice but they kind of automatically go to rub his belly because he's just so cute when he does it. And the dog did not like that one bit. Tried to get out of the pram, literally. He nearly fell out of his pram. And apparently her, her son said, who's this dog's daddy, her, her son said, no, don't take him out of the pram. You're humiliating him. I mean, I think it's fair to say that dogs don't really... If dogs had any pride, any kind of humility, they wouldn't be doing poos in public would they you know <laughs> it's just it, it, it's hard to have any kind of self respect or to try and uh, put on some kind of what are you doing what are you doing why are you attacking me all the time all the time ow Ow. I woke up early this morning. Someone was slamming their door. Like three o'clock this morning. It's like, why? Why would you do that, man? Don't slam your door at three in the morning. Accident, mind you, saying that. The amount of times that I've had to take him out. Early hours. Just into the garden or just to do a wee wee. And I'm being so quiet. Guaranteed he'll start barking or um I'll drop the I'll drop the something on the floor or the door will bang by accident, you know, because the more I try and be quiet, the more noise I seem to make. What is it, Vin Vin? Vin, Vin, Vin. What's it? Vinny Minnelli. Vincent. Venereal. Okay, I don't use that very often. Vinegar. Vincent Van... Vincent Van... Fart. What other names have we got here? And he has just farted. Literally. Why did you have to aim? He always aims his bum at me when he does it. It's like, I'm not sure. I know what he wants. I know exactly what he wants to do. That's it. Good boy. He wants to lay down on his back. He waited for me to get him to lay so he can lay on his back and I cuddle him. And that's what he's doing right now. He's not trying to get away. 
I'm not holding them hard. I'm just I've got one one of his arms is yeah, he's just do it. Did he do this the other day when I was doing a recording? And it basically that's what he wanted me to do. He's just waiting because he, he never sits on me. He usually sits to the side of me or lays down to the side of me, cuddling me or on the the armrest. This time he was actually sitting on the right side of me and just sitting there. And I went and put my hand on his chest. He didn't pull away. He didn't jump off, which is what he normally does. So he wanted me to... I don't know, why doesn't he just lay down on me, on his back, and just lay here, if that's what he wants? I don't know. So he wants... He he, he clearly wants the comfort or the the closeness of having cuddles. Because he's now, like, basically leaning on my chest his whole back going all the way down to sort of top of my legs and just things like just start stroking his leg it normally doesn't want like that he's got his eyes closed and he's just enjoying it it's weird and he's doing this more often he's now this is a third time I think he's done it in the last week. So I don't know why. This is I guess it's just his new thing. He feels comfortable. Maybe, maybe it's taken him this long to feel uh I don't know, safe to be able to just be so vulnerable. Because he is very vulnerable right now. He's like lying on his back, whole of his belly's showing. And I don't know, he just he's happy. He seems to be happy, his his heartbeat slowed down again. Yeah, we I'm sure I did this when he was doing a recording. When I was doing a recording rather. So maybe this is gonna be a new thing. So he's even moving around but he's not trying to get off. He's just start manoeuvring himself so he's, he can stretch his neck so he's leaning more to the right. But he seems to be happy just to just to be laying on me and to be cuddling or to have me cuddle him. Oh. Maybe he's starting to like me a little bit. Well, it's possible, isn't it? I mean, it's got to go either way, hasn't it, really? Considering we were together a lot of the time. It has to go either him liking me or, you know, like, time to move out. <laughs> I'll find him looking in the in the rental adverts in the paper. That'd be weird. With little glasses on. So I had the first um, Open University tutorial thing today. It was just uh, an open class live. There's a lady speaking, telling, just talking about how to use the library. The library, I don't want to call it library, library, and the online library, which is on the Open University. I didn't get to see all of it or hear all of it, but I can go back and replay it anyway because it's staying online for about two weeks. I don't want to just leave it on forever. But I kind of already know how to use the library because I used to use libraries before with um, my other degree and it's pretty much the same system. It's not a lot of difference really. Although back then, I'm pretty sure, um, yeah, we had to order stuff. So if we wanted a paper, we could order it 
I think they might charge like a pound, two pound or something, but they would get it delivered, not to a house, but they'd get it delivered to the library inside the uh, college, the college library. So that was, yeah, or they would print stuff out as well, print out papers. No, we could do that ourselves, yeah. Oh, yeah. Blimey. I think I printed out some leaflets for my for my uh, website back in like 2008 I think I used the library for that I didn't not, not a lot because I was cutting them up into what, A4 size 1, 2, 3 so I was probably getting 6 6 leaflets out of each piece of paper so you know the library were getting good value for their money. <laughs> I don't know what that doesn't make sense at all. So I was, I was using their service for free, but it wasn't really free, was it? Because I was, it was costing money to be there. So I might have took my own paper in. To be fair, yeah, I possibly did. Took my own paper in, so all I was just using was their ink. I'm partly making this up. I think it happened. Yeah, I think so. I think it happened. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, the... What have I got? I got the... 5th of October. Today is the... 25th of September I think 25th of September so 26th of September which is tomorrow which is Thursday 27th of September which is Friday 28th 29th Saturday Sunday 30th Monday 31st Tuesday no 30 is only 30 days in this month isn't it 30 days in September April June and November uh, so 30 so then the 1st of yeah the 1st of October is on Tuesday so one Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the fifth. Yeah, that makes sense because the following Saturday is the twelfth, and that's when the boxing's on, the next big show. So. Yeah, it's just just over two weeks away. He's still laying on his back, but he's now leaning to the left. By the way, those that are just uh, listening at this point, I'm talking about I'm talking about you know leaning to the right now, it's leaning to the left. I'm talking about Vinny's head. Okay, thank you very much. His little left leg is like twitchy. Oh, this is what I really kind of feel that he likes me. It might sound weird, but just kind of he's he's just not a cuddly person. Generally, he'll cuddle up to me, but he doesn't necessarily want to be cuddled. But right now, he's letting me actually cuddle him actual actually cuddle him and it just feels particularly groovy it feels nice I feel privileged shouldn't really have to feel privileged should I he's my boy he uh, I don't know Who knows? I don't know what's going on through his mind. 
but he's clearly it's kind of weird because he I guess he can't ask can he he can't just blatantly say cuddle me daddy so it's a case of me just trying to read the signs I suppose eh I mean, my mouth is like inches away from his ear <sighs> so everything was going splendidly he was cuddled up or I was cuddling him and he was on his back and he was so calm and relaxed and I'll admit it I think it calmed me more as well well maybe we're equally we were equally as calm and sort of peaceful serene screened however there was a sound there was, all it took was a sound outside of this flat it sounded to me like somebody in their kitchen maybe moving a saucepan something like that a saucepan and suddenly he just like uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and he was like get your hands off so I, I left him I put my hands away from him he couldn't, he couldn't get up <laughs> he was rolling around like a sausage and it was just he couldn't get up so in the end he did but I just I just left him because he was, he was so relaxed, but at the same time, he wanted to get up. So he, he rolled over in the end, and now he, he jumped off the chair, was looking around, barked a little bit, and now he's just on the leg rest like he often is. He's calm again. And I know for a fact, if I went to pick him up, to put him back on my chest, he would go, yeah, get off me, get off me. You're not my real dad. You know, it's just the way he is. But for that brief moment, although the other day it lasted for quite a while, it was nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's actually become one of my favourite things in the whole wide world. Him laying on his back and me cuddling him. Yeah, it's one of my favourite things decided I have I have decided decided I've made my mind up it is it might be my all time favourite thing at the moment I still remember when uh, Andre climbed up my sleeve my dressing gown sleeve for the first time after spending about two weeks planning my my death on it he hated Andre did not like me one bit when I first got him I kept picking him up and he's he was like scrappy do like trying to fight me and try he just constantly biting me and then Saturday Saturday evening I was watching boxing I think and he, I was on that old black squeaky chair that I used to have I think at that point it didn't use to squeak because it was fairly new. And this would have been 2015. And he just climbed up my leg and then climbed up you know, the rest of my body and literally just climbed, climbed up my sleeve, the side of my sleeve. And I thought, oh, he's got a plan here. Is he going to try and eat through my armpit or something? And that was it. He got halfway up my the first part of my sleeve. And he stopped. And I didn't really know what he was doing. And he was asleep. He went to sleep. And he was there for hours. I was literally walking around holding my left arm up like straight even when I went to the toilet because I didn't want him to I didn't want to lose the moment 
you know. So I was walking around for a whole week with that dressing gown on. <laughs> the the looks I got in the supermarket. So it was it was so lovely. And ever since then, as soon after that happened, he didn't bite me ever again. Apart from when we were playing. He'd like he would then, but he would never went to attack me, never was horrible to me. He used to get angry sometimes, but never sort of aimed it at me. You know, one time particularly is when I got him the new his new cage because he originally came with this rubbishy old cage that he escaped from. I mean he actually bit through it. Don't know how he did it. And it was wood with metal a metal cage in wood. I mean it's proper but he 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 bit all the way through it, probably spent all night doing that, I don't know. And he bent the bars back. <laughs> it's crazy, I don't know how he did it. And when I went in there, he wasn't in there. And he waited for me to open the door and he ran, ran out and hid. So what I did is I'd already ordered a cage anyway because I didn't, I didn't like that cage. It was just too small. It was, it was big enough for him because he was tiny, but it wasn't, it wasn't going to be big enough for him when he got bigger. So... I bought him a one, two, three, four story cage. There's a video on YouTube actually of him climbing it. And he, when I first, so I put him into the bedroom, or he might have been in his storage room in, in, in his old cage, probably in the bedroom to be honest. So I, I assembled this cage in the living room when it got delivered. And I put it up, and it was, yeah, it was pretty much nearly as tall as me. Yeah, five foot nine, not five foot eight. Nearly as tall as me, probably not quite as tall, probably up to about my eyes, or maybe in my mouth, but it was fairly, fairly tall. And wide as well, so it was a good, it was a good, ca good cage. Probably one of the best in the whole wide world. <laughs> So I so I did that, and I opened up the bottom that you know because there was three different doors that I could open. That was a weird sound. Did you hear that? Where did that come from? He started barking again. What he's doing now, he's sitting here, so hoping that I will, I'm going to pick him up. Oh no, he's not. I thought he was, I thought he wanted me to pick him up again, but he didn't. Nope. Alright, calm down mate, that's enough barking. He's heard something, I don't know what it is, but it's really got, <laughs> he's got both of his, well, both of his are pointed up, but one's like half pointed up. He's got a lazy eye, light, late, not lazy eye, a lazy ear. His right ear, or his left ear if you're facing, but his right ear if you're behind him. So if you was him, it'd be your right. If you was him, it'd be your right ear. Does that make sense? And it like flaps down. But never used to do that. But then I saw a picture of his mum, and his mum had an ear just like that. And it was, in fact, let me have a look. I think it was the same ear. Well, it wasn't the same ear, but it was... Just stop it, mate. Please. Please what? calm down. Calm down. Why can't you just be... Be good. Be a good boy. Huh? Huh? Uh, no. That's enough. That's enough now. Right, there's a picture of his mum... And again, yet yeah, it's the right ear is half down. So I guess that he took after her, and she's big. She's got all. He had he had an option of all, all eight boobies, because he was he was an only child. 
which explains, we were talking about that, it explains why he's so greedy. He's never had any kind of competition uh, when it comes, because he's an only, only child. He didn't have any brothers or sisters to fight for the food or for the nipple. He just basically did whatever he wanted. And there's a picture of him laying on his back. Let's have a look. There's a picture of him laying on his back when he was literally a baby. And, yeah, what a porky pie he was. Honestly, he was so tiny and his little legs and everything, but his belly was massive. Because he never, he, he just didn't stop drinking. It's milk, 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 milk. I'll have that. It's like eight different plates of food, basically. Instead of just one plate. So he's never, he's never been denied. He's always got his own way. Always, then he's been spoilt by everybody. Everyone just, because he's just adored. And everywhere he's lived, he's been looked after, really like over overly, just spoiled. Get gets his own way all the time, and it's really weird because his mum says, "Oh, I spoil him." Guarantee, I know, guarantee that when he goes over there, she's giving him ham, she's giving him cheese, she she gives him a shower, washes his hair. You know, she does all this stuff like dresses him up as a munchkin from the Wizard of Oz. All these kinds of weird things. So he's getting spoiled everywhere. Don't huff and puff at me, you. So he's being told no is a real difficult for him. He doesn't like it. He's not a sharer. He can't play ball with another dog without just grabbing the ball and not letting go. He can't share. Even if it's not his ball, he can't share. I don't think I'm ever going to forget that day when he grabbed the dog's ball and just ran home, tried to run home. And he ran, and he was on the lead, so I thought, just as a laugh, I'm going to follow him. So he didn't get stopped by the lead. I just start ran behind him slowly. And he was running out of the park. There was no joke. He wasn't looking back. Chase me, chase me. None of that stuff. He was just, I got the ball. I'm going. I'm taking it home. He's a thief. He's a little thief. Ah. Uh. But that's all right. It doesn't matter really. It was it was funny. They found it funny as well. But I was just like I couldn't believe it. And this is a dog that he sees regularly, one of his friends. And we were talking. The dog was just focused on something else. Vinny just grabbed the ball and gone. <laughs> just I, honestly, he would have been gone if if I if he hadn't been on the lead. By the time I got home, he'd have been here drinking a cup of tea, eating some digestives. Because you know, once he gets in, he doesn't—he doesn't care about the ball. He's got numerous balls in here. Doesn't touch them. Doesn't care. Although I can't really let him off anymore to run around with the balls or chasing the ball in the park, which is one of the things he loves doing. Because. Because he was like a bit aggressive with another dog the other day. And it's not just that. There's a few dogs that people... Because I speak to quite a few people that have dogs. And there's a few vicious dogs around off the lead. That have kind of been biting other dogs and stuff. So that's, I can't have that happen to Vinny. Ain't going to happen while he's on the lead. No dog's going to get close to him. They have to go through me. Unless, of course, they're, really, they're big dogs, then just help yourself. <laughs> no, I'm not going to let anything happen to him. But if he's off the lead, I can't prevent it because he just runs off. And if he's... I, I can't run very quickly these days. 
I can't run as quick as him, so I can't catch him. And even if and if he runs off, he's not as fast as a lot of the other dogs, the bigger dogs. So you know, it's not like he can run off and get to me. He, it's just like a a situation that I have to make sure doesn't happen because he's so little. It's just he is. I know you've seen pictures and that he is tiny compared to most other dogs there are some dogs that are smaller but not many that are walking around I mean an average there's a lot of big dogs around here there's a lot of average sized dogs which are still twice his size I mean Alsatian is like four times bigger than him probably maybe five times bigger than him it's just an Alsatian could wear him as a raincoat you know it just it just it's they're just way bigger mind you some Alsatians are nearly as big as humans aren't they well they're wolves aren't they really basically they're wolves I tell you they're wolves 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 of Willoughby Chase why does that come to mind whenever I think of wolves I think of wolves of Willoughby Chase is it a book that I read or is it a movie that I saw let's just check this I want to find out now no I don't want to be in the apps I don't interest in walls of surely it should come up will Google search walls of Willoughby nothing coming up chase it's not filling in the the words that's weird wolves of willoughby chase the wolves of willoughby chase the wall it's a 1989 film so no i remember the unless it was an early film because i must have read it it's a children's novel by joan or joanne aiken First published in 1968, set in an alternative history of England. Let's have a look. The story is uh, Lady Green and their daughter Bonnie. Due to Lady Green's ill health, Bonnie pe Bonnie's parents, <sighs> what they're taking a holiday in warmer climates, touring the Mediterranean by ship, leaving her in the care. Due to oh okay, so they've left the child on her own because they want to go travelling, leaving her in the care of newly arrived distant fourth cousin, the Titia, Sly Sly Carp. Also due to arrive his body's orphan cousin Sylvia, who lived in London with Sir uh, Willoughby's impoverished but plot. That's a lot of Sylvia's. Uh, the robust and adventurous Bonnie. That word, robust. Do you know, politicians adopted that word uh, a year, two years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And they were using it in every, and I do mean every single interview they were using the word robust um, another word unprecedented that was you know that's another thing another term that, that was being used constantly it still is sometimes but not so much now at the moment it's let me be clear let me be clear Every politician says that. Let me be clear. And also, everything's a crisis. Everything they love the word crisis. That's the that's definitely a a very popular one with the politicians. It's it's a little bit like you know. I remember years ago there was the old saying, uh, "Everything happens for a reason." I believe everything happens for a reason. And everyone was saying it. Like it got to the point where it didn't mean anything anymore. Because what do you mean by that? I don't know, I just hear other people say it. 
so I just copy it and it lost its whatever the, the original meaning was just seemed to be lost just like with the word robust 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 I heard the, the word too many times for it to mean anything anymore just you know let me be clear let me be clear is I do find it as I saw Eddie Hearn do this the other day Eddie Hearn is a boxing promoter and he got asked a question and he did not answer the question at all which is a a, poli a political thing you know so how politicians not all but a lot of politicians speak they don't answer the question they basically just use psychology isn't it they just start and then lead somewhere else and I guess it's a distraction technique it's like a little magic trick with your words to the point where even the interviewer if they're not on the ball sometimes don't seem to realise that the politician or the interviewee has manipulated the situation I find it interesting I got very interested in uh, oh what is it behavioural science behavioural science behavioural that's right isn't it behavioural and I just I almost wished that there was a degree in it because I think there's something that I would enjoy doing because it just absolutely fascinates me in fact I wonder if the Open University does that OU degree behavioural be behavioural science see I didn't know what it was never heard, really heard of it before but generate offers a number of courses related to you know, so, sci, social science with psychology BA on the psychology which is what I'm doing BSC BSC honours psychology oh that's okay am I doing a BA or BSC I think I'm doing a BA BSC this, this, this degree explore, explores psych, how psychologists use research to contribute to debates on mental health relationship child development and more Students develop analytical and communication skills and learn how to work independently and collaboratively. Um, what am I doing then? Okay, I thought I was doing a BA. Maybe I'm doing a BSC. Right, let's have a look. I can find out. Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. You, 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 you. I can log in on my phone. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Let's have a look. Log in. Sign in. Where is it? Yes. Okay. Dun da da dun 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 browse. So what I need to do is go to e uh -huh. student home. That's it. Student home. Am I doing a BSc or the BA? I should know really, shouldn't I? After all, it's it's kind of my course. I should kind of know what I'm doing. BSc. I was going to say that sounded more like what I was studying. The BA sounded different. BSc. So, I wonder what BS. 
So bachelor's of arts, I've got mine is because I've already got a BA in counselling studies. So that's a bachelor of arts, but BSc is a bachelor of science honours in psychology. So cool, that's good. Well, it's nice, isn't it? So I've got a bachelor of arts because at least then I've got a different kind of undergraduate degree got a Bachelor of Arts and now I'm going to have a Bachelor of Science when I'm 93 years old. Yeah! Yeah! Baby! Yeah! But yeah, social... Uh, behavioural science. Very interested. Because... Did you... Oh, blimey, did you know? I found this out today. Oh, what is it called? Uh, okay, well, if I come out of there, I've been I've been read or listening to this uh, some audio books and some lectures and stuff by a man called Rory Sutherland. R Rory Sutherland, and apart from being funny, he's seriously knowledgeable. And about marketing, advertising, how basically the public is manipulated. Uh, okay, what is the name? What is the name of the government? Government manipulation department right social media manipulation by political actors and industrial there's a name for it what's the last name I forget the name of it now I put Bane instead of name. What is the name? N A M E. Okay. What is the. N no, it still comes Bane. Why is it? I put in name. Do you remember doing that? Because uh, I'm putting manipulation. Name. Of. Of. Government fact sheets. The counter disinformation unit was set up within a part of digital culture media. What is a mis ministerial department? This is like a, a, a re an actual theatre place where they discuss how they can manipulate the the country like getting them to what is it you know, getting people to take jabs and getting people to have uh, to put money into pensions and stuff like that just how they can do it and it's, a, that's, it's actually a department the counter disinformation digital C DCM Right, I could probably do this better on my... Ooh! Manipulation politics it comes in many forms. Couldn't the politician generally speak in false information? What is... Uh, what is the service? What is another term? Right, I can't find it, but there is... There is a thing... Basically, it's just about getting the the general population because people follow each other. It is some interesting stuff. It is a thing, right? They a charity wanted to raise some money, so obviously you know, they sent out envelopes 
with literature to something like 300,000 homes. This might have been in either this country or America, I'm not sure. And they did three different types of printing, three different types of letters. One said that, oh, was it? You get 25%, don't, uh, an extra 25, no, an extra 25% will be added to whatever you pay. The government will add 25%, so whatever you, whatever you give, 25% will be added on to the amount you give, which we paid from the government. Another one said, another letter said, uh, what was it? I should have prepared for this, shouldn't I? Just give some money. And I think the third letter said, because I said 100,000 of each one, I think the third letter said, Oh, what is it? Wait a second, I'll remember it in a minute. Uh, 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 uh. I'll come to me another Another technique was, I think it might have been these evangelists, TV evangelists, phoning up someone at home, live, like on radio or television, phoning up saying, "Hi, your your friend Tracy uh, gave us your number, saying that you'd be willing to donate some money, and you're a very generous person." We're phoning live. We're on TV right now, and not only did people did they give money, but loads of people gave money like in the hope that they wouldn't get phoned up probably there was something what was it oh, I really should plan ahead of time before making these recordings Ew. I can't remember What was it? No, I can't. I can't remember. Come on, Vinny. Vinny. But there was a few few ways of that they could get people to manip to manipulate people, Vinny. One way they uh, actually got people to donate is if they put the name of the person like signed it with the first name as the same as the person they're sending it to so if it came to me Juicy JJ and if they signed that different surname but it just happens to be the same first name the donations went up by 70% above average so very targeted so if you ever get a letter asking for something and the person who signs it happens to have the same first name as you you're maybe being manipulated oh i mean i guess with ai or automation i suppose it's possible to do that isn't it suppose and if you know that by doing that it's going to get people to more likely to donate then it's probably worthwhile doing it ah i still can't get my head around the old uh the two videos of the same person one saying ba 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 and the other one going ba 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 
and you could see so they play them both separately so ba 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 and then va 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 and obviously it's a different lip movement isn't it and when you realize that the first one ba 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 was the only sound it was the same sound on both but watching the lip movement changed the sound that's just mind blowing to me it's beyond mind blowing maybe it's just normal maybe you know this is something that everyone's seen before and it's just like one of those weird things but for me mind blowing absolutely how can by seeing something can the sound change it doesn't make sense the sound is the sound which makes me wonder if well just makes me wonder how much I mean, if you let's say if you're watching a a dubbed movie for example I don't ever remember having problems listening to the sound of a dubbed movie and then they're not moving their lips in the correct movement because it might be Spanish or French and it's dubbed into English so they're moving their lips different yet it's not affecting the sound for me I don't know stuff like that ever since I see it I think last week I'm I'm enthralled I don't know if that's the right word absolutely enthralled astonished mesmerised uncontainable I don't know it's just really wow I was wowed by it Oh my my uh my toes are cracking brilliant Ugh. I'm trying to think of some other things that were just that blew me away a little bit that I've learnt this week. Some kind of things that he used uh da, 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 da. yeah adverts they had the in the old days for coca-cola they would have a song i think probably in the 50s or the 60s it'd be a song by probably a famous musician and the whole song would just be a song and then right at the end they'd say they'd include the word coke or coca-cola in the last like two sentences of the song Uh, I mean, there's a really big song, apparently. It's, um, I'd like to teach the world to sing. A do, 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 do. That one. I didn't realise that was actually written for a Coca-Cola advert. Well, apparently, the person who wrote it, Coca-Cola didn't like it. They They had the advert. They made the advert. But they didn't really like the song. And the song was so popular. Thousands of people were contacting the station, the TV station or the radio station, whichever it was, to find out where they could buy the song. So he'd been sacked. He'd actually been laid off because they didn't like what he was doing. And they brought him back in and they, I think they recorded the song as an actual song. And that was, I think it's one of the most famous Coca-Cola adverts of all time, I think, that one. And it's, was it from the 60s or was it the 70s? I'd like to teach the world to sing a doo-doo harmony 
It's yeah, something like that. I can't even remember. I do remember the tune. I just don't necessarily remember the advert. Only the flakiest, flakiest chocolate tastes like chocolate never tasted before. Ooh, ooh. There was a lot of really famous adverts when I was a kid. Now, I couldn't tell you any advert now because I don't watch adverts anymore. So I couldn't even tell you. You know, I, I was watching TV at my friend's. It just happened to be on. She was watching Emmerdale. We were talking. And I didn't recognise any of the adverts. And in my memory, adverts are just ridic- they repeat it over and over again. So the some of the the only channels I really watch on TV is sometimes I watch these channels that show old sitcoms from the seventies and eighties, and their adverts were always aimed at old people, like really aimed at. Or they're aimed at like donkey sanctuaries or stuff like that. There's very rarely any like normal adverts. It's all pensions or arthritis chairs or things like that. It, you know, funeral plans. It's just no, there's no like ordinary. Sometimes I just want to see a, a toilet cleaner advert just, just for a break, just for a rest. Because I'll be honest with you, if I've been watching a sitcom, it's, I'm laughing, and suddenly, funerals, donkeys with only six legs, and just all these things like, give this chicken a new home, like, oh man, I was enjoying that comedy. Hey. That's why I can't watch Comic Relief. I know Comic Relief has raised probably, it just helped so many people over the years and it's brilliant. And I used to try and watch it, but I can't go from laughing at something to seeing the saddest story. I just can't do that. It's just, just, I think it's unhealthy actually, to be honest. For me it is. It doesn't work. Uh, that's why I like the benefit gigs that, that are done. So a bunch of stand-up comedians will do a benefit gig and maybe at the end the the charity that was raising money might come on and do a little speech. But everyone's had the gig. Everyone's had a good laugh and it's been lots of maybe famous comedians. And, you know, so that for me that works. And if you don't want to listen to the to the person at the end, you can leave. But to keep you know, stopping and starting and moving between famine and then jokes about willies, you know, it's I mean it's funny, but it's still, you know okay, maybe not the jokes about willies. Do 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 no, but you know, it's just like it was a good idea, but I don't like it. I don't like it. I can't. Like Children in Need is another one. I can't. And that's something that's close to my heart. You know, helping kids in that. But I just don't. I can't watch something that's funny and then really sad. It's just. I mean, I could, okay, I can watch comedies like that. So there are some sitcoms or that are kind of quite dark. I can do that to a degree. Depends on how, how you know, where they where they're coming from. I mean, Ricky Gervais's Afterlife was, yeah, it was a hard watch at times. 
but it was also, you know, it was funny. Very funny at times, so... Yeah, what's the other one about the bloke who's being stalked by his... Li oh, I forget. But he... That one was... It was funny at times, but it was... No. Nah. It was... It, you know, it was... Pretty, pretty, pretty... Hard watch at times as well. The little dolphin? I forget. Little... Dandelion. There was a name. It had a name. I can't remember what it was. The... The protagonist was a, a Scottish lady, and I think he met her in London. And he was a stand-up comedian working in a pub. He was a bartender. She. In this TV show, allegedly, she um, became to really like him, and it went a bit, a bit, a bit too much. And I remember she, the real actual person who it was based upon, was interviewed by Piers Morgan. And it was uncanny how much she was like her, like characteristically, which is really weird, considering the the lady who played her wasn't Scottish. The actress was not Scottish, but she also, as far as I know, never met this woman. So to be able to... Yeah, I guess for the the bloke who wrote it to manage to get the actress the actress to portray this lady to be so have those it's just it's quite amazing really that that part is the thing that I find quite interesting because she just is quite quite similar not just in voice, but in the mannerisms and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. What was it called? I don't know. Someone will, someone will write something. It was called this. What are you talking about if you don't know what it's called? I know what it's called. Everyone knows what it's called. It won an Emmy. It won an Emmy. Oh, man. I decided to, I might mention this, there's a show called The Bear, and it won an Emmy, so I thought, I'll have a look at that, I'll, I'll check it out, couldn't watch it, it was so fast paced, so quick, everything, everyone was talking at the same time, right, no, see ya, next, I couldn't do it, and then the next, the other show that was, also won an Emmy it's called Shogun now I've seen Shogun I saw it originally with Richard Chamberlain in, and it was brilliant but it went on for too long a bit like me went on for too too long and I can't do that again I'm never going to get those back even from childhood, even though the days seem to last forever sometimes, I realised that I'd lost a lot of my childhood watching that programme. You know, I was only like 11 or something, and I remember thinking, I'm never going to get this time back. At 11? It just, it just went on for hours and hours and hours. We had like five different video recorders recording it set at different times because it went on like I think the whole thing lasted about 24 hours or something it was a long haul it was really good 
and it was drama that's what it was it was just really high high drama and it was popular at the time I'm surprised it's kind of been maybe forgotten in a way bearing in mind that it was such a classic show and it just looks like they've redone it but they've done it more I guess it's going to be even more authentic and I suppose more up to date maybe but then it's still about the Shogun isn't it because it was based on a mo- on a on a really a best selling book ironically the book was smaller than the, the movie or the, the TV show and a book was the size of a small cottage so they must have written extra stuff to, it just lasted forever I honestly I remember watching it once watched one episode and when it finished I'd gone through puberty it just it just went on for so long I was I was happy you know I started like can we watch Shogun like When's this going to end? When's this show going to end? It's been like going on forever. Uh, I remember doing that when I was a kid. I'd wake up in the morning hoping like, this is going to be the day. Or this is going to be the day. My voice is going to break. And I wouldn't speak. And I'd think, mm, my throat feels a bit, mm, maybe, maybe this will be it because I was probably the last person to have a deep voice in the whole world and I'll be going uh, uh, uh. and I thought that's it and I walked downstairs and I, I was going morning but it ended up like morning and it was, it was just it wasn't a deep voice at all it was just clogged up I was <laughs> just Flem, it's weird though. I, did, I really, really. All I wanted was a deep voice. Wasn't much to ask. I'm still waiting. I know I have a deeper voice than I used to have, especially eighteen, eighteen years ago. If you listen to any of my old videos. Or watch many of my old videos. They're all on YouTube. And it, honestly, it's like me going, Hello, welcome to Jason New... No, www.jasonnewland.com In fact, I might have said Newland back then. www.jasonnewland.com Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is going to be a relaxation session. Such a high on it. Now relax. Yes. You can feel it in your feet. Yes. Now feel calm. Yes. You can feel your eyelids. Becoming more relaxed. Yeah, I didn't. I don't think it really worked so much as relax, 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 relax. <laughs> Just yeah, it took a while to get my head around it. <laughs> anyway. Need a time for bed. It's raining out, raining outside. So I don't know quite how I'm going to get him to go to the toilet. Hmm. I need an. I need that extension lead because I used to be be able to do it with him. With the extension lead, I could stay inside and let him just 
go seven meters away and do his toilet and come back in. But now I've just got a short lead and I have to go out with him. Can't let him off the lead because he'll just run off. <laughs> so, thank you for listening. This is the end of this recording. <sighs> I didn't think I was going to make a recording today, to be honest, but I ended up doing one. So, remember, remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Oh, good video. I can now talk with my normal voice. Oh, good. Oh, I can't believe I keep having to talk with that deep voice, that fake voice. Relax. in a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice. Maybe in a few hours time. Perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly. Especially if you find. Like some people do. And myself as well. I. Sometimes I'll find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again. And it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button 
that as soon as I've done that, press the play button. This was in the days of CD players. Press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really it was as if my body knew exactly what to do and the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down now now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back, some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say so if I said to you focus on your feet notice your feet relaxing I will be focusing on my feet I will be noticing my feet relaxing if 
I said, focus on your hands. And maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. And it's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation 
So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity, with a joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly.
so deeply peaceful. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. completely free noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs
deeply. Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. in the feelings in the back of your neck Feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace. spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. Relaxing.
a very slow stomach peaceful in your stomach back notice notice how relaxed you now feel all of your back your spine your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spread in those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. your elbows
feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back Letting go, really letting go. Peace. Drifting. Mind. Just Wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Join a sense of letting go. Even more
enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
drifting. Peaceful energy Peace to breathe so much easier. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Drifting.
total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible, so very relaxed and peaceful. So peaceful. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And 
things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind too also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just Allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself. To the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness. To move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness And it feels nice. It really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come now I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead just being aware of the feelings of your forehead and any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed it just means you're in the moment this isn't this isn't a sterile environment this is the world I live in the countryside so there's lots of nature sounds around so as you focus on your forehead just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body moving down to your eyes focusing on your eyes noticing how the your eyelids feel so heavy yet so light at the same time and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely moving your focus down to your mouth your lips your tongue your teeth and your gums and the whole of your mouth relaxing calm and loose as you focus now on your jaw not just the part of your jaw near your mouth or your chin but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears that whole of your jaw feeling more relaxed and calm focusing on your neck the front of your neck and your throat relaxing and loose and calm the sides of your neck the right and left side of your neck relaxed and loose and calm Focus. 
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan Gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. that spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine, Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And they're feeling 
those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. The feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders, that sense of relaxation, not just travelling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message into your arms and you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread all the way into your wrists, your forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time time so light and gentle
folk se now on your hands a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar relax deeply feels fingertips attention to the front of your body to your legs 
muscles in your thighs. Your knees so relaxed. muscles and your shins completely Feeling in your feet, so peaceful and so calm. So peaceful. So calm.
So I'm going to start counting down now, from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
chin. Seven. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, we're going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. 
your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now Focusing on your eyes, I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one right now.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
With your counting down from ten to one, what do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? We could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body, before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. And gives you that distance, that space now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four. Three, two, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. And we're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem to sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I sure that I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something? Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors, otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll well, speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you And you can still have that attention on your thighs. And maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. As you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. You know, anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms. Which is okay. Doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And it's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, it didn't seem to do anything. Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. Shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles and your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. And there's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff, it's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, and to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. And that might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. That fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins. Massaging and gently stroking the bones. Gently stroking them, healing in a loving way. Because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only eight stone still a lot of weight for these little ankles now I'm a lot heavier than 8 stone double that yet my ankles support my body all the time although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down as a in fact my whole legs do my feet feet also go and my toes clap they're so happy legs really are amazing and I know that talking about talking about your legs is probably possibly the, among the most Im, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. But they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles are just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Count down from ten down to one, and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. Two, one, and as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful six Two. Has slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice. 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love like little petals from a flower, you just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down Slow down, quiet down, for now. So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. every number those thoughts will become more and more relaxed starting with number seven
attention now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing and focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. And you may Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. In just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers more and more relaxed with each number from eight to one, you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands and fingers, becoming number 
drifting, drifting again, starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. And this is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and 
overthinking and anxiety, tension. Just generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. Almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort place where you can be you, where you can accept yourself for who you are, a place where you're not trying to please anybody else ever, a place where you can actually Not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. And that sense of gratitude is in the air all around. It's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. healing energy spreads through your veins, traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy it's not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment. But also, you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, 
just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep even when we're kids sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to we try to <laughs> stay awake maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to we don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born, not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA, and sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's 
it's also really easy. Very, very easy to let go because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings. You have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive only a positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. Each and every day, moving forward, you're going to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. 
you can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Which makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. You can continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. 
twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve. Eight, seven, six, This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body Those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not 
purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax. It's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. down, your mind relaxes, and even though we've not really started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. brain fills with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort and relaxation increases. in a way that your mind starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed start to drift if that's what's needed so if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to 
fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts. That's also what will happen. Because by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax deeply. to drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift and when you come back again and you hear me talking and I'm focusing on a different part of your body and you may find yourself drifting but you don't realise you're drifting until you stop drifting and you're alert again to my voice focusing on a different part of your body starts to relax even deeper because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, eventually that drifting continues into sleep. That's the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you. Because when you do, and if you do fall asleep, it's so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep. And it feels so nice to relax into own body and mind, as you you feel that healing energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply, relaxing you so on your eyes moving down to your jaw down to your Shh. 
shoulders. Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focus in on your fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? It's almost as if they just mix together. Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing your elbows, focusing on both of your elbows, just observing the feeling of your elbows.
observing your ankles. Being aware of the physical sensations in your ankles. Noticing now your toes on both of your feet. Being aware of how your toes feel. to sin how your entire body feels notice sin Letting go Letting go Letting go Of everything Letting go Letting go Letting go I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported 
and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel you feel confident in how you look as well so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you. So you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head. I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. With both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and there's a massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck. 
especially that area where perhaps we hold tension and as that area is massaged you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck and maybe you can breathe it out as well notice how it feels notice how you feel then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders that muscly area starting to massage that area on both sides I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage even that's not technically the shoulders but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders from the neck and again that can hold tension and stress and when massaged sometimes a nice deep massage is useful and you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. Just to give you a little bit of a stretch. But very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, needing, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and you can let your fingers in there. And it can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. Don't worry, it'll still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. 
into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. You can feel nice and you can feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so so relaxing so comforting now just rest your left arm back down
start to massage your back, the biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where you already be at been, that area at the top, in between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards, making a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the your back, but the the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against, almost the part that connects your front to your back. Just massaging down firmly, but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. Eventually we get to the spine, we can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. We can do that a few times, sometimes people would use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine and almost just push down and go all the way down to the bottom of the spine each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. And now I'm going to move to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side. And to the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged it releases so much from your body that's not useful starting a healing process 
which will continue long after this recording is over. And massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is pressing and kneading firm and gentle at the same time it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move or we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time, starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mess it, massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. It's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back, doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move to the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging 
the back and the sides of your thighs gently and firmly there's a lot of muscles there it's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body but that's up to you you can gently stroke the back of your legs where you know opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint it's a very sensitive gentle area then working down to your calf muscles massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose using both hands and fingers digging deep to your ankles and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet gently but firm enough so they don't tickle and just allow pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet the bottoms of your feet the sides your arches your heel you can put a lot of pressure into your heel feels amazing yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers each one individually moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing starting at the top of the thighs working the back of the thighs and the sides massaging deeply and gently that whole area working all the way down this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging so perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area as you move down to your calf muscles massaging your calf muscles firmly and 
gently. Moving down your ankle into your feet. Massaging the backs of your feet. The bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. And that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Now, as you turn over in your mind, laying on your back, I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your shoulders. Just to get back in touch with that area. And as we move up. I can clean my hands, make them more fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead. Your eyes are closed and I can just stretch your eyes a little bit. Pushing up on your eyebrows. And just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks. Around your ears. Into your jaw. Gently. The sides of your neck, your chin, and just moving down from your neck down to your chest. Starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. Then just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around, because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next, moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are. Stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And then moving down again. hands 
to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. just below your rib cage. Moving down and then massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. So you're going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side. Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. around to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. And then going the other way around. There's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them, and I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging your knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin 
gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy the feeling deep going to do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. And you're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. You can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically <sighs> gently blow that candle out. Just <sighs> so it's not a big Low, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. as we move down the numbers you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed and if you need to sleep you'll also find yourself becoming 
incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed, more and more deeply sounds where you are, you'll be aware of those sounds at the moment, but you may start to just not even notice them. at all, because they're unimportant, where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's Horace the pigeon, who likes to say hello sometimes, and there's the odd plane that goes by, maybe traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out, the less important anything is, the more candles you blow out, the further you seem to move away. sounds and from general day-to-day -day stuff seems to just move away on its own as you feel say and then you blow that candle out too <sighs> so easy so simple I'm 
going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. When you blow that candle out, you'll find immediately a slight change in how you feel. As well as a real sense of positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting with one hundred, blow out that candle now. Ninety nine. Six candle. Candle ninety four. Ninety three
82. Seventy eight candle seventy seven candle. Seventy four candle seventy three. Candle. 
do. Seventy one. Do 
Candle fifty four Candle. Fifty two.
handle. Forty-seven. to
handle. 37.
Twenty eight Seven.
Kommando 22. Seventeen.
routine.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, when you give the say-so, when you say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's almost like a breath of relief. Oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down on a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and, oh, oh it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again. For a little while at least. And if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two. And it feels blissful. And just by sitting down like that. Your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. In your mind. You're prepared. 
to let go of everything and just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate. Any tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind and it is almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button and all the tension just releases and it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of a clock just unwinding and it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As a sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. And you may find that the more relaxed you feel, that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and that was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when we're stressed and tense we not may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go allowing them to drop onto the floor. You start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It's, it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness different body parts as they become looser and looser. Even your breathing seems easier and more natural, effortless, as that cool air 
filters through your mouth or nose into your lungs. Breathing in comfort and relaxation. And then just breathing out any excess remaining tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are, have come to a standstill or maybe just much, much slower than before. Because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling completely calm, loose and relaxed really is a great healing experience for you and has So many positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body. Even your bones are relaxed. All your muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. So deeply relaxed. And your brain really starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. As you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, sends those messages to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeper. Concerns allow them just to drop onto the floor because they're no longer necessary in.
this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, concentrated healing. of your brain, feeling so loose and comfortable, so relaxed and peaceful. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. You feel deeper, deeper, relaxed, deeper and deeper, relaxed, calm, so
wanting go everything you're going to do a body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are to notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment so we're going to start off by focusing on your hands just be aware of your hands I'd like you to move your hands around just Maybe move your fingers a little bit. Open and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements focusing now on your feet and if you can just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands maybe turning your ankles moving your feet around moving your toes gently but only very gently and very slowly noticing how your feet feel in this moment Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes perhaps squinting your eyes scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focus in on your thighs. And I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs just very very gently just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs 
noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Focus to the back of your neck, just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders. So as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. Only very slowly and very gently, not trying to force anything. It has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in time with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are, between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently slowly, so you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms feeling in this moment, and just noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go, notice how the tops of your arms feel right now. As we now focus on your stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button. Moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin. Maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently. And slowly. If 
that is a difficult thing to do. Maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling in this moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of your lower abdomen. As we move your attention to your mouth. in your lips and inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing how your tongue and your mouth feels. your mouth, moving it to your left, maybe pressing it gently against the side of your mouth, and then to the right, gently to the side of your mouth, perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth, and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth, always very slowly and very, very gentle, so that you can on your wrists, and I'm going to ask you to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion, very gently and slowly, just so that you can feel the sensations that you are currently experiencing. Experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again very, very gently, 
to observe your lower back. That back part is just above your hips, where your coccyx are. which also really does include the sides of your body because those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your hips, If you're physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side. Just enough for you to gauge how you feel in your lower back. Perhaps you could even. Gently and slowly in order to really be in touch with the physical sensations of your lower back. just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and closing your mouth. Gently and slowly. So you can be in touch with how your jaw feels.
Noticing now your chest area. You don't need to do anything to move your chest because it moves every time you breathe. This part of your body moves also every time you breathe. You may not notice that. Usually, as you observe.
cortex, your groin, those muscles and those bones, and your midsection. Just noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently. side to side very gently and slowly very very Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind. And your mind itself just starts to gradually... It doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense, or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. 
starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. The feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings for all those different muscles and the skin the hairs of your arms the all the internal parts of your arms the veins bones, just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling, maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm on your right arm? Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to it may not feel like anything other than just a feeling you know it's there the feelings in your shoulders Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. But of course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder... And then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. your lower back the 
the left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. And of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. And sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently, but just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch your lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. comes along, that feeling, in your chest, just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well, mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles the top of the chest, but at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. being with whatever feeling there is in your chest. And what I noticed that uh, I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing in, and it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels, it feels okay. Doesn't feel 
a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes way more than it would normally. But you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, uh, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself. All times when relaxing deeply, it's important to be kind to yourself. As you notice your mind, how much as your mind slowed down since we started this recording. How calm and peaceful is your mind right now? With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. A relaxation.
relaxation to fill your body maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away Almost as if you're moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie. A space movie, you know, and they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe to dream. Continue to relax. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. Find that every now and then you realize that you weren't listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine 
something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of a dreamy state and then you become aware of my voice again and even though you may want to focus on my voice you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety as you feel more comfort spreading through your body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature And even if you can hear background sounds, they just don't seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind like a gentle breeze yet strong enough to blow away all negativity strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety or stress that was there before and blow away any other thoughts or feelings that just don't fit with the sense of relaxation that is filling your body your mind and as you focus on your mind you count down from ten down to one and with each number you hear Slightly more relaxed, just just slightly. So from ten down to nine, just a slight movement. From nine down to eight, just another small 
change in how you feel. Eight down to seven. That feeling is is a gap, almost like a gap that starts to get wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have that are growing now. Feelings of comfort and security and confidence. And that gap becomes wider. Eight down to seven, seven down to six. And when you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation. Almost like there's a magnet outside of your head suck in the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't want sucking them out through your skull and then down to four you can start to really experience that sense of not just emptiness but space a place full of fresh air a place where you can stretch it's almost as if as you go down to four and three your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing as it moves down to two when you get to one your mind just feels exactly how you want to feel almost a perfect feeling maybe a a sensation that you'd like to keep a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. And you can stay in that, that space of comfort and confidence. Confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 and this is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own a time when you can maybe sit down Maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. And just count slowly from ten down to one. And re-experience these feelings in your mind. And when you feel that way in your mind, your body copies your mind. And that 
that feeling is spread through your spine and your nervous system into every part of your body, travels through your bloodstream, healing and relaxing every particle of your existence. Can, we can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own and each time you count from ten down to one the feelings of comfort Calmness and deep, deep relaxation becomes stronger and deeper. Filling your mind and your brain with these positive chemicals spread throughout your body, relaxing you so quickly, relaxing your whole body and mind so very, very easily, just by counting from ten down to one. going to do it now. I'm going to count from 10 down to 1 and I'd like you to repeat the number after me. So when I say 10, you can just repeat to yourself 10. Just notice, be aware of how you feel. in your mind and your body. And when I say nine, you can repeat to yourself, nine. Again, noticing the increase in comfort and Calmness in your mind and in your body. The same when I say eight. When I say seven. Six. When I say five. Four. When I say three, two, and lastly when I say one, you can repeat that number now of course when you do this on your own without listening to me, you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you, so you can adapt, so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1 faster than I do, then go ahead and do that. Or if you feel when you do it yourself, then you'd like to have more, more space between the numbers. Maybe take a lot 
longer to get from 10 all the way down to 1. That's your choice also to do. count from 10 down to 1, and when I get to 1, that will be the end of this recording, unless of course you're listening with music, and the music will continue.
20. 19. 18. 17. 16. 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Now open your eyes. Noticing how you physically feel. Having counted down from 20 to 1. Allowing stress and tension to lead through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is, I suppose, quite understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time, you're going to feel relief of tension and stress, any anxiety that you may have. Leaving through your stomach. Just leaving through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather so surrounding your belly button area that whole area you can feel the tension of your body whatever's left just releasing from that area and you may notice that your stomach will become very relaxed as I count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11,
can open your eyes again if you choose, or you can just keep them closed because it feels relaxing. Just notice how your stomach feels. And notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focus in on your upper body, your back, your chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. And you know you may start to feel more of a sense of tiredness, which may be the reason you're listening to this recording because you would like to let go completely of everything and drift off into a nice, natural, calm, relaxing sleep. So now we're going to focus forehead and if you choose you can incorporate your eyes in this focus as well so your forehead and your eyes just that whole area basically almost as if you were wearing a mask you know like a I don't know Batman mask or something or I'm trying to <laughs> Zorro or something, you know the kind of mask that covers your eyes but also covers quite a lot of the forehead. And focusing on that area because that's the area that we're now going to release tension and stress from your mind, from your brain and from your mind and any tension that you may have remaining in your face, in your neck, in your jaw in your eyes, in your forehead, and all your scalp. So basically any tension within your head area, including your mind and your brain. And that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, Fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. In. And as you scan your face, your jaw, your eyes, your cheekbones, your ears, your forehead, your scalp, your neck, the back 
of your neck, in the front of your neck, the sides of your neck, in the throat. Noticing, being aware of the comfort, the increased feeling of relaxation, not just in your head and neck, so the rest of your body just notice how loose and calm you feel and how easily it is to just let go completely let go do now is I want you to focus on the top of your head and we're going to allow every last piece of tension or stress that might be lingering or hiding in your body or mind or head to just be sucked out of the top of your head and released into the air almost sucked out into the clouds imagine a big cloud above your head almost like a whirlpool and it's just going to suck that tension out of the top of your head just take it away for good. As you focus, imagine an opening in the top of your head where that tension and stress and any remaining issues, maybe worries or concerns that are of no use to you now, can all be sucked out of the top of your head and taken away. As I count down again from 20 down to 1. Now. 20. 19. 18. Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Wow.
noticing how you feel. How relaxed and calm you physically and mentally feel right now. It feels so nice to just let go, to give yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take a break from all that pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about right now because this is your time to let go this is your space to enjoy feeling deeply relaxed peaceful in your mind relaxed in your body can feel so good, so nice to just not have to do anything, to be able to really enjoy that serenity that comes with letting go completely. That peacefulness that comes with being in this peaceful space. And you can keep this sense of calmness for as long as you choose. If you choose to drift off into a deep, healing, natural sleep, then you can do that. It's completely up to you. And you can keep this feeling of calmness physically and in your mind for as long as you choose. To feel completely relaxed. Completely relaxed. And I'd like you to make up your mind. That you're going to relax. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide that you're going to relax. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it? When you're telling yourself, relax, in a gentle but firm way, that only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't really have someone else saying to you, now relax. Relax. You know. Um, it needs to be gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say it to yourself, it means more. It's personal and your brain and your unconscious mind and your body listens to what you say. So, for example, 
we'll test it out. We'll do a little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the force, the positive force that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind quite quickly just by you telling yourself to relax. So I'm going to start by, let's, let's focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly by focusing and imagining that your hands can hear what you're saying, you know, like they've got little ears, which is a bit weird. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Noticing. How your hands start to relax. Now focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So you're just saying the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say relax, but you you might say relax or relax. You know, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows. And just tell your eyes directly. Relax. Now. Now I just did that myself and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax, you know, because I start talking again and maybe that part hasn't relaxed fully. But what will happen is it will just continue to relax even though I'm talking. And that's happened with my eyes. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better in a way. So sort of I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really it was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there, but I wasn't, but I wasn't focused on it before, so I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really conscious to those feelings. is still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually my hands have got a certain kind of energy like not buzzing but I can kind of 
feel a degree of energy in my hands. Maybe that's where the tension has been released. Maybe that's causing that. The next part, I think we should focus on the back of the neck. That's a part which quite often, uh, well for me, holds tension. I don't know about for yourself. But I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what you're doing as you do it as well. So I'm telling my body parts to relax as well. So if you tell your neck, the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck and just say, relax. In your own words, in your own tone, in your own voice. You can say out loud or you can just say it to yourself internally. But you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck. As if the back of your neck can actually hear what you're saying. So do that now. Just say relax to the back of your neck. And I'll do the same. Now what I noticed, and you may have had a similar thing, is even though I was focusing on the back of my neck, other parts started to, I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe because they want to be relaxed as well, but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders, the tension in my shoulders, and in my upper back. Whether that was because my my back and my neck was saying, well, I'm pretty much okay. It's the other parts that need attention. But my lower my, my back and my neck is still relaxing. But I just became more aware of other parts that needed attention now this might happen and it's not it doesn't mean that it's going wrong it just means you're being notified of more places that also want to feel relaxed so I'm going to focus on my upper back so you can do the same even if you don't have any uh, feelings of tension that are obvious in your upper back. You just focus on your back and the whole area from your shoulder blades down to the middle of your back, down your spine. And with me, it's more the shoulder blades that are more. Yeah, that's the parts that are really sort of uh, giving me the nod that it needs relaxing so I'm just going to ask that part to relax and you can do the same now relax your upper back something strange happened there and this often happens I've been doing this for what, 16 years or something and often I don't know why I'm surprised but amazed really that 
it can be a feeling. So when I was focusing on the back of my neck, my upper back was starting to feel quite stressed and in need of attention. As soon as I started talking to you about my upper back and talking about, you know, getting ready to ask the upper back to relax, my upper back already started to relax. It's almost as if it doesn't need to hear the words, it just needs the attention. just needs to be noticed. That is something that often happens in this type of situation, is when you start to relax a couple of parts of your body, as we've done with our hands, our eyes and our eyelids, and now back of the neck, top of the back, upper back. The rest of the body seems to just take notice and decide in its own way to start relaxing other parts of your body start to just become looser. I suppose it's kind of like a bit of an avalanche, you know. The little ball starts rolling and before you know it, the whole of your body is completely relaxed and calm. And if you focus on your face, you focus on your eyes, your eyelids, your eyebrows and the muscles around your eyes. Maybe you start to notice that your forehead is more relaxed than it was. Maybe your face is more relaxed. I would say my entire face is a lot more relaxed than it was. So we're going to focus now on your shoulders. Again, just like before, just tell your shoulders. I mean, you, you can do them individually. You can do right shoulder, left shoulder. I just generally do both at the same time. And just tell your shoulders as you focus on them in your mind. Focus on how they feel. Maybe you can see them in your mind's eye. Just tell your shoulders. to relax. as nice as they relax. But I do notice, probably especially with my back, is the connection between the different parts. The back, the shoulders, the neck. being all connected and being such a, a large part of your body. 
it's almost hard to separate them from each other. And my lower back has started to relax on its own. Maybe I'm going too slow. And that could be an issue because we all go at different speeds and the idea at the beginning of this recording was for you to be able to just say to yourself relax without focusing on any particular part of your body because when you know that telling your hands to relax and your hands relax you tell your eyelids and your eyes the muscles around your eyes and your eyebrows to relax and they relax you tell the back of your neck to relax and it relaxes tell your upper back to relax and it relaxes you tell your shoulders to relax and they relax told your hands to relax they relaxed and they continued to relax and you told your eyelids the muscles around your eyes your eyebrows to relax they relaxed and continued Hold the back of your neck. Focus on the back of your neck. And told it to relax. It relaxed. And continued to relax. And you told your up back to relax it relaxed and continued to relax as with your shoulders you told your shoulders to relax and your Shoulders relaxed and continued to relax. And it's not just that. It's that the rest of your body 
has also been listening. And that relaxation has been spreading. So from your eyes, the relaxation spread to your forehead, around your face, into your skin, into your jaw. to the front and sides of your neck, all the way down your chest and stomach. Your relaxed hands and shoulders meet up through your arms, relaxing. Your forearms, your upper arms, your elbows, your wrists. Letting go. Your lower back. Your hips, buttocks, groin. All just start to relax or continue. Even more comfort. Spreading through your legs. down to your ankles, the tops of your feet, the sides of your feet, and the bottoms of your feet, relaxing into your toes, each toe Calm, loose, and as your body relaxes more, your mind becomes. Slower, more peaceful, to the point where if you choose to fall asleep, easily do that. Easily drift away. Because there's nothing going on in your mind. Your brain is peaceful. body continues to relax. between your body relaxing and the word that you say to yourself, relax, means that you don't need to focus on just one part, you can just focus on your entire body. Saying the powerful word, relax. And the 
shepherds uh, those familiar sensations of comfort spreading throughout the body loosening and calming and healing every part of your body feeling more relaxed so that all you need to do from now on is just tell yourself Starting now with number 20. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Thirteen. Twelve.
seven.
to body has slowed down, the muscles are more relaxed, everything is calmer, as a cat say the word relax after each number and every time you hear that word relax you will feel twice as calm muscles in your body will feel twice as relaxed Starting 